Hey viewers and friends, Andrew back again and welcome to another video and today we're going to be taking a look at my Australian horror collection. Got quite a lot to get through um, so I'm just going to get straight into it. Now I do own most of the Aussie horror films. Um, I'm also going to include some sort of cult um, thriller type movies at the start. You guys all um, know what I'm talking about when I show them. Um, but we're going to start with a really classic Ausploitation movie, which is Turkey Shoot. Um, this movie is fantastic, one of my favourites, and I definitely recommend it. If you're looking for a really good Ausploitation movie with a lot of splatter, uh, Turkey Shoot is the way to go. Another cult classic is Dead End Drive-In. Um, this is a great movie from the 80s. I definitely recommend it. It's about a um, young teenage couple who get trapped in a drive-in movie theatre for juvenile delinquents or people that don't really um, conform to society. They have to stay there and they basically try and escape. Really, really good. Got a fantastic 80s vibe to it. Uh, we have a serial killer movie, um, which I decided to mention, and that's Snowtown. Um, not officially horror, but it is really hard to watch in parts. Very, very brutal and pretty violent. Uh, this is based off a true case um, about a couple of serial killers from Adelaide who buried um, their victims in barrels of acid and hid them in a abandoned bank called in Snowtown, hence the name of the film. This one was excellent. I highly recommend it if you're a fan of serial killer films. Snowtown. And the last sort of non-horror I wanted to mention. It's a revenge movie. And that is The Horseman. This movie's fantastic. I absolutely love it. And I would rank it up there with the likes of I Saw the Devil. Um, this has some of the most realistic violence that I have ever seen. And it's about a father whose daughter was involved in a pornography group. Uh, she ended up dying. And basically the father tracks down the people involved in the porno ring and seeks his revenge. Right, now on to the official horrors. Slashes first. Uh, we have the absolute shit fest that is Nightmares. This movie is terrible. Stay away from it. Slaughtered. Uh, this one's not too bad. It's a low-budget independent slasher set in a country Australian pub. Um, it could have been so much better than it was. Um, the cast and acting were fairly mediocre. It did have some decent kills though, um, but as I said it could have been a lot better. Then we have Blood Moon from the early 90s. Um, I really wish they'd focused more on the slasher portions of this film. Overall, I thought it was a good film, but it kind of focused more on the um, sort of teenage soap drama side of things um, and kind of lacked the slasher elements. But still, this was fairly good. Next we have Cut. Uh, this is a fairly underrated slasher film. Um, I definitely recommend this one. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, pretty unique concept about a group of film students who basically want to complete an unfinished movie. Uh, they go ahead and start filming it and of course they get picked off one by one by a killer. I love the killer in this one and I especially loved the ending. Uh, really, really good. Easily the best Australian slasher, which isn't really saying much, but this one was fantastic. It's The Killage. Um, this one came out fairly recently, I think 2011, and so far this is the only official release of the movie, the Australian edition from Monster Pictures. Um, slasher comedy with a heavy emphasis on the comedy elements. Um, low budget, independent, but they did a phenomenal job with the production values in this movie. And the kills were awesome. Alright, now on to um, just straight up horror. Uh, we have the creature feature Razorback. Uh, 
long weekend from the late 70s. Um, I haven't checked this one out yet, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. Sort of nature versus man. Savage's Crossing, which I haven't checked out yet. And the last one I haven't checked out yet is The Tunnel. Um, this one is meant to be pretty good. It's set underground, under the, um, like, underground Sydney in the tunnels. Um, I think it's meant to be like a sort of found footage style film. Um, but as I said, I've heard fairly good things about it. If you've seen it, uh, definitely let me know what you think of it. Um, I just haven't had the time to check it out. But I will do sometime. Uh, then we have a really fun creature feature called Rogue. Um, if you're into your creature features or Killer Croc movies, I highly recommend this one. It's really good. And Australia, I've got to say, um, have brought out some fantastic modern horror. Um, you know, I think they really hit the nail when it comes to modern horror movies. And they released some fairly original stuff as well so I highly highly recommend especially um, the following movies uh, The Clinic um, this was a blind buy for me I'd never heard about this movie before and I saw it in stores and was attracted by the interesting looking cover read the synopsis um, and decided to give it a go and this was exceptional it's basically about a group of half a dozen women and they're trapped in a abandoned like factory area and basically they've all been um, they've all had their babies removed from their womb and the babies are sitting in cots with colored tags attached to each cot and basically um, each of the women have had a colored tag inserted into their stomach and it's basically up to the woman to decide what they're going to do to identify which baby belongs to which woman. Really, really good. I highly recommend it. Uh, the next one is a really recent Australian horror movie called Red Ink. Um, this was really, really good and pretty original. Um, it stars Tom Savini in a small role and he also was involved with the special effects. There's some fantastic gore effects in this one. Um, especially an eye gouging scene which looked amazing. Um, as I said, original concept, it's about an accused um, killer and basically he gets um, half a dozen people that were involved in the case. He um, chains them to an office desk and basically makes them um, figure out a way to um, make him not guilty, you know, get him off the charges basically. Um, really, really good. I highly recommend this one as well. This one I need to rewatch, but I did enjoy it. Undead. This is a really low budget um, independent zombie film. I loved the first half of the movie when they focused on the zombies, and one of the characters has this awesome three barrel shotty which kicks ass. However, the second half of the movie kind of went downhill. It turns into like this really weird and bizarre um, sci-fi type film. Um, it's been a while since I've seen it. I do need to re-watch it, but that's Undead. Then we have The Reef, which in my opinion is the best shark film since Jaws, hands down. This movie is fantastic. Um, they use real sharks throughout the movie. Um, this one relies more on um, like intense suspense rather than a lot of action. Not a lot happens in this movie, um, but it's fantastic. Really well shot. Um, very simple concept, but done extremely well. So I highly recommend The Reef. It's fantastic. Uh, this one's been getting a lot of recognition lately, which is great to see, and that's The Loved Ones. Uh, this has been out for a while now, but it's only just had a American release, I think, last year, and it's really good. I've been noticing a lot of people have been picking this one up over the past sort of six months and really enjoying it. Um, this is one of my favourite Australian horror films. I like it a lot. 
Uh, if you haven't seen it, it's about a girl and her father. Um, they end up kidnapping uh, one of the girl's high school peers. Um, he refuses to take her to the prom. Um, she doesn't. She's not happy. Um, she doesn't take no for an answer, and he. They end up. Well, the father ends up kidnapping the boy, and basically they put him through a night of absolute torture. Really, really good though. I enjoyed it. Um, amazing performance from Lola, who's the psychotic uh, girl in this one. Next up we have Storm Warning. Uh, this is a really good sort of revenge um, slasher, I guess you could almost call it. About a young couple that um, get caught up in a storm while they're out on their yacht. Uh, they take refuge in what they think is an abandoned farmhouse. Uh, three hillbillies um, arrive at the house and um, basically kidnap them. Uh, the woman managed to escape and basically seeks her revenge on the three men one by one. There's not a lot of gore, but when it happens, it certainly makes an impact. Uh, there's some amazing gore scenes in this one. Um, and it's really well done. Um, it's low budget, but done extremely well, so I highly recommend this one. And last, and certainly not least, we have Wolf Creek. Um, this is another one that I guess is fairly popular, fairly well known. This one is probably my favourite Australian horror. I've always loved this one. It's fantastic. Um, like uh, Snowtown, it's based off um, a serial killer. It's more loosely based off him than Snowtown, but basically it's based off Ivan Milat, who was the backpacker murderer. And this one has one hell of a creepy villain. He has such a creepy laugh in this one, but this is fantastic. Definitely recommend it, and apparently there's a sequel in the works, so looking forward to that. Uh, there's one more that I can think of. Um, I don't own it, and I never will, because it's absolutely terrible. And that's uh, Bait, or it's also known as Bait 3D, you know, the shark movie. Filmed on the Gold Coast, um, about a couple of killer sharks in a supermarket. I rented it, and absolutely hated it. It was terrible so um, yeah just wanted to quickly mention that but this has been my complete sort of cult and horror Australian film collection I hope you've enjoyed it um, I recommend most of these movies um, if you're looking for um, some really good Australian horror for your collection but yeah if you've seen any of these movies definitely let me know what you think of them and thank you for watching